fact, joining us right now on the Squawk Newsline is the man who blew the whistle on big tobacco years ago, Jeffrey Wigand. He's now the founder of a nonprofit called Smoke Free Kids. He says that this is kind of a gateway situation to have these e-cigs, and that leads teens to, and children to eventually work their way to cigarettes. Jeffrey, thank you for joining us today. Good morning, and thank you also. Uh, just for people who aren't familiar with you, I, I, I want to remind them that you were somebody who once worked for a tobacco company doing research in the uh, research and development company, but you were also the whistleblower who said that tobacco companies had for years been spiking some of these cigarettes, causing and creating higher addiction levels. You were the one who blew the whistle on this and, and, and really helped bring the lawsuits that came against the industry and eventually brought about big change. Um, what do you see happening in e-cigs right now? On e-cigarettes, uh, I mean, in, in particular for Juul, who is, commands more than 70% of the market share on what we call ENDS or electronic nicotine delivery systems. However, uh, Juul is marketing a product that is totally unregulated, or in better terms, it's an unlawful product. And that's been so stated by the courts now as well as the FDA. So they have a, some, some issues associated with the continued marketing of their product as well as Enjoy and the rest of the vaping folks. As a researcher, when you look into what's happening, why do you think this is so destructive and addictive? What do you think is actually happening? Well, first of all, with, with, with Juul, you have a high dose of nicotine, up to 50 milligrams in a little pot, which is approximately equal to two cigarette packs. In one pod? In one little pod. Okay. So, so you're talking about high... the heavy dose dosing that you think is at addictive levels. Yes. What they ha so, and they've added mango to it and peppermint and a whole of other flavors that are very susceptible for the youth, children. And if you look at the statistics, the penetration into middle school and high school kids is roughly about 60%. That means that our children in the school are vaping now and will ultimately change to a cigarette. And it's interesting to note that Altria, or Philip Morris, has taken a minority stake in Juul. Which means what? Now, the other, all, all, the, all, all the vaping devices add or deliver nicotine, not as much as Juul, and they all add some flavors to it. What, what's unique about it, what's going on now, and the five deaths, I mean, when we had light cigarettes, it took 15 years before we had the first death associated with smoking light cigarettes. We have five deaths already in less than five years, and that's significant. How is it happening? First and foremost, the, the users are experimenting with adding THC or other drugs into the vaping system. Most notably is been defined and has not been verified, is the vitamin E acetate, also uh, uh, coconut oil. And these are quite, sorry, are not the but they're excipients. They, they volatilize and allow the carrying of the active chemical into the vapor phase. Ugh. Is it enough? And what's happening oh, is sorry. this fat that's going into the lungs starts coating the lungs and incapacitates the lungs. These kids that are coming into the emergency rooms are suffocating because what they've done is they've been smoking the product, mostly cannabis, THC, that's been using an oil as an excipient. And so it's, why, it's called lipoid Pneumonia, fat pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are going on ex ex external breathing systems 
because their lungs have flat out failed them. There's no way to redissolve the fat that now is adhered to the, on the surface of the lungs. Jeffrey, I want to thank you for your time today. We do appreciate your calling in. Again, Jeffrey Weigand. You're welcome.